So in the movie, Yes Man, Jim Carrey is called out as a no man, no man, no man, no man. by hundreds of people at a seminar. And the speaker tells him, You say no to life, and therefore you're not living. So he then makes a covenant with himself to say yes to every opportunity that comes his way. And his life becomes so much more fun and joyful. I love that movie. But I think the problem that many of us have is not that we say no all the time, it's that we don't say it enough. Saying yes comes at a price. When you say yes to one thing, you're also saying no to something else. And when you say yes to everything, you really aren't saying yes to anything. But if you learn the power of saying no, you create the space to say yes to things that align with your values and truly commit to them. So today I want to discuss why when you say no more often, you're actually saying yes to living the life you want to live. And at the end, I'll give you a few actionable tips on how to say no effectively. So stick around for that. But first, why do we say yes so often? When I worked as a lawyer, my work consisted of a mix of small projects with short deadlines, like writing a cease and desist letter or a short legal analysis, and big projects with longer deadlines, like drafting a writ of summons for a court case. Because I underestimated how much time those big projects would take, I would continue to say yes to new small projects that came in. And this one time that got me in trouble. I had to clear my schedule, say no to everything and work late hours to finish that rate of summons, leaving little time for the client to review it. Some things just need to get done and saying no isn't on the table. But for many other requests, it's worth asking, is this something I need or want to do? We often say yes because it feels uncomfortable to say no, not because we want to say yes. We don't want to be seen as unhelpful, arrogant or rude even. We want to be liked. Some people are even real pleasers and can feel guilty when they say no. And there's also the fear that it may backfire. Often we have to keep interacting or collaborating with the people that ask us to say yes to something. Our coworkers, family or friends. So in the short term, yes is the easy answer. You've made the decision and avoided discomfort. But saying yes too often comes at a cost. James Clear points out that yes and no are of entirely different magnitudes in commitment. When you say no, you're only saying no to one option. When you say yes, you are saying no to every other option. Research from the University of California in San Francisco shows that the more difficulty you have saying no, the more likely you are to experience stress, burnout and even depression. When you say yes to a lot of requests, it's easy to get overwhelmed especially if it goes at the expense of things you deeply value, like family time, pursuing your interests, or living more slowly. In an interview with Colin and Samir, Thomas Bragg of Yes Theory said, We had a friend who said, you know, when you, when you, when you do say no, you say no here, but you say yes to yourself. Mm. And I think we talked about that as well. Mm. It, yeah, and I think that's a really powerful thing to, to remember. Saying no is only one half of the equation. In minimalism, there's the aphorism, less is more. I think it also applies here. By being more selective in what you say yes to, you create more space and time for the things that you care about. It all starts with getting clarity on what you value most. In your job, your relationships, lifestyle, and then moving toward that. In his book The Power of a Positive No, William Uri writes that a positive no doesn't stem from being against something, but is rooted in a deeper yes. And when you have clarity on your deeper yes, it gets easier to say no to things that don't align with that. Take for example this channel. The majority of you watching aren't subscribed. Don't think I didn't notice. What's up with that? If I now put you on the spot and ask you to subscribe, it's easy to click that button to say yes. So wait, I have time. But now YouTube is going to recommend more of my videos to you. So saying yes is more comfortable now, but it costs you time in the future. The British economist Tim Hartford has a good rule of thumb for situations like this. One trick is to ask, if I had to do this today, would I agree to it? If you could spend all day watching my videos right now, then that's a yes, and I would very much appreciate that. But if you really want to be doing something else right now, don't subscribe. Like, I won't judge. Go ahead. I don't care. In his book 4000 Weeks, Oliver Bergman argues that we will never have enough time to do all the things we want to do. And we won't be able to master the time we do have. And only if we embrace our finitude can we start cultivating a fulfilling life. But one thing you can do is limit how often you say yes to something. Although no is a clear statement of what you don't want, what's behind it is what you do want. When you become pickier, your yeses become more powerful. 
you don't spread yourself too thin. It's like Alexander Graham Bell said, the sun's rays do not burn until brought to a focus. While saying yes to the right things opens doors and opportunities, saying no sets the boundaries needed to protect those yeses. What you say no to defines who you are. If you limit the number of people you consider close friends, you can cultivate deeper relationships with them. It's better to have two good friends than 20 acquaintances. If you reject a job offer that doesn't align with what you're looking for, you give yourself time to wait for something better to come along. And if you're an athlete who chooses not to eat fast food, you increase your chances of excelling in your sport. By saying no, you're also helping the other person. Although they may not appreciate it in the moment, by setting boundaries, you show them you respect yourself, what you want and do not want. It establishes this new reality where your yeses carry more weight. So how do you say no effectively? First, figure out your underlying yes, in which your no is rooted. Often, when people say no, it's reactively. They're trying to avoid something or accommodate someone, and it's based on emotions like fear or anger. A while back, I was let go from my job, together with half of the team. Nobody saw it coming, it was really quite a shock. But within a couple of days, I was talking to another company. They reached out to me. It seemed like a great company and I was excited about possibly working together. But I had also spent some time on my underlying yes in the months before I was let go. I had actually been close to quitting myself. So I had a pretty clear idea of what I would want out of a job going forward in terms of compensation, hours, culture, responsibilities. And it gave me a good foundation to say yes or no if I would get an offer from this company. If you know what you really want, what's most important to you and why, your no can be something positive. Finding your yes gives you the strength to carry through with your no. So take out a piece of paper and write down what you would like your life to look like. And try to feel it. When you add emotion to your vision, it becomes more powerful. There are templates available online that you can use, like Ramit Sethi's Rich Life Exercise, or you can make a vision board. Write down your interests, needs and values to settle on what really matters to you. And if that's too broad, start with the area you're having the most trouble saying no to in your life right now. Brainstorm why that may be, what you would like instead, and why. It's one thing to have an underlying yes, but another thing altogether to commit and follow through on it. People don't like to take no for an answer, and you will likely encounter resistance. Especially if you have a reputation for saying yes to every request. That's why you need a plan B to support your intention. This backup plan lets you express your needs without appearing desperate. This can be a profitable side hustle you've built over the last year that allows you to say no to certain projects at work. Even if that holds the risk of missing a potential promotion or losing that job, it can also be changing sports teams if the coach is verbally abusive. Or even ending a relationship with your partner or a friend if they don't respect your no. When I talked to this company I mentioned earlier, I had a plan B. I had a side hustle that was bringing in some money, and this YouTube channel had also started to get some traction. That gave me the confidence to say no if we couldn't agree on the terms. And peace of mind if they decided not to hire me. If you don't have a plan B already, take your notes on your underlying yes and brainstorm what your plan B could be. Consider what it would feel like to exit the situation, or what other options might be available to you. And if that plan B would take some time, like building a side hustle, what are the first steps you can take today toward moving in that direction? You may never have to resort to plan B, but having a solid backup plan will give you the confidence to stand firm and hold your ground when you say no. It will empower you and the other person will notice. When you say no to someone, they may need some time to accept that. So to soften the blow, it helps to be gracious in your response. In the art of war, Chinese general Sun Tzu suggests that you build a golden bridge for your opponent to retreat across. The idea is that by giving a graceful way out, you can turn resistance into acceptance. Be calm and mindful of your tone. Show empathy by placing yourself in their shoes. And don't say anything bad about them. What good is a short-term victory if it starts a long-term war, right? There's a good chance that you will have to interact with them again. Or that they know people who you are close with. By building a golden bridge, you create the most favorable conditions for saying no. So I had a call and a couple of back and forth emails with this company, but when I asked them to give me a concrete offer, I got a vague response instead. 
And it had been weeks since we first started talking, and I felt lukewarm about this opportunity by then. So in my reply, I didn't say no directly, but I shared what I was looking for in terms of compensation and responsibilities. And I also let them know that if that wasn't on the table, I may not be the right person for them at this moment. And that perhaps we can revisit our conversation six to 12 months later. In Yes Man, Jim Carrey ultimately realizes that the point is to say yes to things that matter to you. Because you know, in your heart, you want to. And that's the power of saying no. Oh, one last thing. If you still struggle to find your underlying yes, cultivating stillness may help. I did a separate video on how stillness is the key to happiness, which you can watch right here. When I'm alone and it's quiet, I'm better able to reflect on what matters to me. Maybe it works for you too. So thanks for watching. I hope to see you in the next video and take care. Bye.